Everyone have a good holiday weekend. Health isn't valued until sickness comes. It's a Thomas Fuller quote. I was very reluctant to put a male health lecture today for the guys. I just find that a lot more males, not only within our practice, but also within my own family, tend to be a lot more reactive versus proactive when it comes to health. I'll tell a lot of my middle-aged patients, you have investments in golds, bonds, stocks, whatever, etc. As soon as your health goes south, all that means nothing. Tonight's lecture is going to address the four things that are killing the guys today. There's four key things that I'm going to go over. You're lucky that Dr. Tent isn't doing today's lecture because it'd be a very short, blunt, and to the point type of lecture. There's going to be some points of hard love in this lecture that I got to get on you guys about. But for those of you who value your health, this lecture is for you. After this lecture, I'll do a Q&A for those of you who have come out. I'm going to prepare a very good gut lecture for the fall. Health begins in the gut. There's a lot of things that I address with patients and a lot of people that will plateau with their health unless you really address gut health. You can find us all on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I got my own, my own personal Twitter thing. We're all over social media. If you've had a great experience with us, we like to hear your feedback. This is a patient that I had about last, uh, about a month, month and a half ago. She came all the way from uh, Chicago, um, seeked out some top neurologists for headaches and migraine issues, and just an atlas adjustment, just getting her neck properly adjusted with the atlas, knocked out her migraines. And, um, you know, it's, it just baffles me that medical doctors and neurologists really underestimate the power of chiropractic care. If you hop on our website and go to the lab testing page, you'll see some of the functional medicine testing that uh, I run. It's not all on there, and there's some other ones that I'm running that are newer and some toxic profiles. The uh, Great Plains Laboratory toxic profile one I'm running, it checks 172 different chemicals in that, in uh, this microgen diagnostic labs for these really challenging UTI issues and bladder infections that people are dealing with. I'm finding that they're a lot more reliable than your traditional lab corp and hospital-based testing to find pathogens on the urinary tract. You could follow our blog if you're on our website. Dr. Tent and I are recording record the last of our protocols. I think we're kind of done doing the protocol thing. We may start recording more, you know, specific cases or doing something to kind of change up what we're doing as far as the little mini things. We will Skype with you wherever you are. I had two from Nevada today, one from Romania, one from Florida. It's very cool seeing the amount of people very interested in what we're doing at our office. This is a Skype patient from Florida. Her name is Velvet. She's a nurse. I fixed her just doing some very simple, cool stuff, some blood clot stuff in her legs and some swelling issues she had in her legs. She decided to finish out her bachelor's and go in the chiropractic um, program down in Florida and leave the medical profession after working there X amount of years and seeing the mess behind closed doors, like I've seen the mess behind closed doors at a hospital for four years as a patient transport. That's why I chose the direction I went and I'm here because of that, because of what I saw behind closed doors. This is my family. My oldest is three years old. My youngest is a year and a few months. I'm raising men. I'm going to raise these boys to be men. I'm not raising boys. And one of the key things of this is keeping plastic out of their life. If you have not seen the Disappearing Male documentary, I highly recommend this. I've talked about this at previous lectures before. All this plastic and chemical stuff is feminizing the males today. This will be one of the killers that I'll be talking 
further within this lecture, but this is affecting all males at every single range. This is gender bending issues with younger boys. This is early breast development with younger girls and breast development in male teens. This is low sperm counts. And this is prostate cancers with older guys today. You want to learn to open those detox pathways and clear this stuff because it's affecting everybody. Why male fertility is in, is in crisis. Britain and the rest of the Western world is uh, heading for male fertility crisis after sperm counts died more than half in the past four decades, scientists have warned. Yet scientists don't know why the sperm counts is falling or even whether the decline is reduced in fertility, although logic suggests that it is leading academics say, yes, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, plastics, this is all estrogen. This is an effect that you're seeing today. Been impressed with the, the stem cell shots that we've been doing in the office. Donate umbilical cord stem cells. Patients were really trying to help them not go in a surgical route. They're responding great as far as the joints, your knees, the shoulders, the backs and necks still been about 50-50, but the joints have been responding very, very well with stem cell treatments. How you guys doing? It's Dr. Jeff Sunshell here from Diverse Cell Services. We are here with Juan, our stem cell guy, and he's going to tell you guys something a little special. What about the stem cell world is great, but I say it to you, I travel, I know of 284 clinics, and they're amazing. These clinics have a lot of, a lot of people, a lot of clients, a lot of doctors, a lot of MDs, a lot of chiropractors, but nutrition is the most important thing. This clinic, by far, the patients that come to me have a single problem. And they look at me, and as one of the gentlemen said to me, um, my shoulder hurts. I go, it's okay. You know, I look at his shoulder, and he has one thing wrong. And I ask him, you know, how old are you? And he says, I'm 72. I still want to do push-ups. And I'm like, really? You want to do push-ups? But my point here is that coming into this clinic, it's far more about just the clinic itself. It's about the alignment. It's about the nutrition. It's about the value of your health and well-being. Health and well-being is the truth, and this by far is truly one of the very most successful practices I've ever been in. And I thoroughly love coming here, and I enjoy the company, the, the patients that, that we see are far more healthier. And we're talking people that are older. My clientele that I usually see are in the 40s and 50s. I see people 60, 70, 80 years old here, and they're the ones that are still saying, you know, I got a bad shoulder, I just need to get it fixed but they're still healthy. They eat well, they have good diets, and all because the supplements they're taking is what they need. You can take supplements all day long, it doesn't matter. But if you take something you don't need, and you need this over here, this isn't gonna help you. This one over here is what you need. These guys can pick and select and help you get through your diet and your nutrition. Once you see that, man, this, this is truly one of the greatest places I've been be able to be able to work in, work with. This team is amazing, and I wish you all the luck in the world. And to give them some perspective, how many clinics throughout the U.S. and people are you seeing? Okay, so I, I have 32 clinics that are open like this throughout the month. And out of 32 clinics, this is number one. And, number, and if you took them and rated them, they're still above by 10 points above everybody across the board. I see clinics that uh, are strictly medical clinics, and they're still not close to this. I have not seen a clinic like this one here in Novi, Michigan. That's Juan. He has followed my lectures quite a bit. He's down 26 pounds in a matter of two months just applying some very basic paleo, paleo diet protocols. I'll get more into that as I dive into some of the lecture, but down 26 pounds and a big thing, he just couldn't believe how much sugar intake he was getting as he was adding things up. There's um, the movie called That Sugar Film. My gosh, it's just amazing that even all these health food based things are still cumulative amounts of added sugar that people don't realize how much sugar they're actually getting until they start looking at labels. As that's not his sugary Starbucks coffee, that's one of his workers there. <laughs> so <clears throat> I'm gonna dive into the four things that are killing the men today. I should be a jerk right off the bat and say the number one killer is the guy in the white coat, your traditional MD, because most of the guys I get in my office today, 
I got to dig them out of the hole that their MD put them in. Medical errors are the number three cause of U.S. deaths, researchers say. Based on the analysis of prior research, the John Hopkins study estimates that more than 250,000 Americans die each year from medical errors on the CDC's official list that would rank just behind heart disease and cancer. And I guarantee you the under-reporting of medical errors, that number should probably be a lot higher. I re posted that in one of my previous lectures about two years ago. Meet Kent. This, is, this gentleman has been an absolute pleasure to deal with the last few months. I'm treating him and his son. Comes to me with low back pain. He had inflammation issues that he didn't realize it was due to gout problems. So I go to fix his back, fix his gout. And I talk about backtracking with all the, the amount of medications these patients are on. His wife got whacked by the medical profession. I'm trying to prevent him from getting whacked by his doctor and the amount of medications he, he's on. He's on 12 different medications. And to show you that this is a pretty serious back, that's his wedge right in the back that was giving him issues. He's got an artificial hip and he's dealing with one kidney. His cardiologist wants to run a dye test on him to look at his heart. You can't do a dye study with someone who only has one kidney. That one kidney won't tolerate that. I'm looking at his list. I'm like, my gosh, I'm like, you're not going to make it doing this kind of stuff. So I fix his back. I fix his gout. He goes to show me. He's got a cellulitis infection thing on his leg. He can't heal this thing because he's on a blood thinner and he's eating Motrin for pain all the time. I go, you got to stop your Motrin. We got to get you off this blood thinner. Every time he bumps something, he nicks himself. He's bleeding like crazy because of all these medications he's on. Manuka honey, thymoimmune, some other protocols. About a month later, he's healed up with this. I fix cellulitis in his foot, fix his gout, fix his back pain. Now I'm going after his heart so I could fire his cardiologist because if he keeps on in that direction, he's not going in a, he's not going to be in a good spot. He's a he's a farmer and he likes to do the maple syrup stuff during the, the March season. So he brings me a maple syrup thing. I thought it was kind of funny. He gives me a Jack Daniels bottle and just fills it with the maple syrup and sticks a sticker on it. The real number one killer of men, stress, is absolute stress. I did a Facebook poll in this, um, on the, the event for this and you know just kind of want to gauge what people want to hear about. Everyone want to hear about energy stuff. These guys have no energy today. Everyone's energy is just absolutely tanked just because your adrenals are just tanked or you're just stressed and your cortisol is just running through the roof. This is absolutely key to get this under control. And for the guys who are interested in this whole energy component, I talked about this probably about a year ago in my thyroid and my adrenal thyroid connection lecture. So I'm, I'm going to rehash some of this in this section here, but if you want more on this adrenal component, you go back to that. You got so many guys, their work is like someone's pointing a gun at them the entire time and they're stuck in this sympathetic dominant mode and it's just go, 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 go. The problem is with this, if you're stuck in this go, go, go mode and your cortisol goes up, your testosterone goes down. I'm going to show you this chart in a second, but I want to show you the effects of stress on your body. Short term wise, it releases glucose from the liver in your muscles and these are the people that have elevated blood sugar just because of cortisol issues and the stress that they're not taking care of. Long term wise, it's going to shut down your immune system, it's going to you get loss of uh, muscle and bone mass, you become more insulin sensitive and it shuts off parts in your brain. I had a lady in today, I'm trying to fix her Hashimoto's, her cortisol's to the roof. Cortisol shuts off conversion of T4, T3 in the body. She's having a hard time regulating her armor because of her adrenals and her cortisol through the roof. She's stuck in that go, go, go mode because she had some past trauma in her childhood and she feels like someone's got a gun at her because of some trauma in her childhood. 
Here's what a Corazol test looks like. I want to see what Corazol looks like on these guys. Blood's not good enough. An AM, PM Corazol test is not good enough for these guys. I want to see a saliva test to see what it's doing all day long. I want to see it in the green and down below. I use Genova Labs with that. It's 115 bucks. You got insurance with it. If you don't, it's 175 cash straight to the lab. I want to see what your cortisol is doing because you look at this, you're stressed out. If you're stressing, you're chronically under the gun. You're going to convert all the way down to cortisol. If cortisol's up, what's down? You don't go down to this pathway. That's going to be low. So cortisol's up, testosterone's down. There's another key thing you need to look at in this chart as well. You need cholesterol in your body to produce hormones. It's very key. Cholesterol is absolute key for a lot of these conversion factors. So cortisol and stress, you need to get this under control because it will be this complete imbalance if cortisol is up and testosterone is down on you. This is my protocol with cortisol management. The Biotics ADHS and the Rhodiola Ginseng. I love that combo. It gives guys energy, but it helps manage and keep that cortisol at a lower level. Your cortisol is high. Most guys will have a harder time falling asleep at night. Sometimes the inability to stay asleep at night as well is an issue with cortisol. Typically, if you have a hard time staying asleep, it's more of a sugar handling issue, and your sugar drops, and you need more protein to help balance that blood sugar. So many people are, are so undernourished and have crap for energy because they're just completely undernourished. The food is not what it used to be. It doesn't have the vitamin and minerals in it. 85% of our soil is depleted of the minerals. The minerals aren't a soil. It's not in a food. It's not in us. This is my daily protocol. I stay nourished and I put premium fuel in my body because I want to run at a high pace all day long. My wife wants to, uh, in stress, being under stress, burns up very vital nutrients in the body. And specifically, calcium, magnesium, potassium get burned up very quickly if you're under the gun all the time. That could be correlated with the blood pressure stuff. Magnesium puts the break and potassium on the blood pressure stuff. So if people get burnt with the stress, blood pressure could be issues with that. 85% of our soil is depleted of minerals. You want to use real minerals to grow your garden. A cap of your PDCM and about a gallon of water, you'll have a stronger garden than you've ever had before. This is a pre picture of what we got going this year. I'll have a post picture of that in the fall. Cortisol will drive up your blood sugar and drive up insulin issues in your body. This is what you'll see with insulin resistant issues. Increased cholesterol, low HDL, high LDL, and tri increased triglycerides, your glucose A1C insulin. So this is, you don't get the stress under control. This can turn people diabetic just because the cortisol continually increases your sugar and this insulin stuff. And once your pancreas burns out, boom, you turn diabetic. Depending where you park your fat tells you everything. If you're parking it in your stomach, you're going to love handles. This is, you know, your, your common cortisol issue. This is your common insulin resistant areas. If it's elsewhere, you know, it could be high estrogen issues. It could be low growth hormones. Where you park your fat tells you everything. My key things and what works best for me is simple paleo dieting stuff. You cut out your sugars, you cut out your grains, and you cut out your dairy. I follow a lot of this in the ketogenic based things during the weekdays. I follow this during the weekdays, I maintain my weight, I go off on the weekends because I'm at where I want to be at so I, I won't continue to torture myself through the weekends <laughs> if I don't have to all the time. Intermittent fasting, very easy to set a time thing up and you know eat in a certain time period throughout the day. I choose noon to 7 p.m. and I fast from 7 p.m to noon the next day. I'll do that three to four days a week on top of the paleo ketogenic stuff and it, it works great for me. I'm not killing myself at the gym. I can't go to the gym as much as I used to like to so I do some simple half hour workouts you know uh, insanity, the plyometric stuff, P90X, simple basic stuff. For you guys who are interested more in losing weight, these are factors I like to see on blood work with patients. 
I want to see what your TSH and your thyroid's looking like. I want to see a, a cortisol in the morning and PM. That's via blood, but I prefer to see more of that cortisol via saliva and see what it's really doing. I want to see your gut sensitivity. So this will be more addressed in my next lecture. But if you have high food sensitivities, you got this gut inflammation, cortisol goes up with that, weight just follows that. So sometimes it's easy, it's just cutting out food sensitivities and people lose weight doing nothing except cutting out these food sensitivities. Candida, finding a lot of people this candida issue, too many use of antibiotic steroids, birth control, hormone replacement therapy, hepatitis B shots, they're full of yeast. And these are the guys that, and the people that have brain fog all the time, a lot of this brain fog components, this candida issue. All these guys have dead stomachs on acid reflux stuff, and they put them on Nexium, products like Tums, Tagamet, Protonics. You need acid to digest your foods, and they give you medications that shut your stomach, off, stomach acid off, and now you're not digesting anything. These things create deficiencies in people. Long-term use of these create deficiencies on you. You won't absorb your minerals. You won't absorb your B12. You don't break down your proteins. You turn off your immune system, your gut on those medications. I've seen guys come in the office on this stuff, 15 years of that medication, and I can see osteoporosis in their bones from that medication. This is on a hair analysis. You turn off your stomach, you shut off the absorption of minerals. Your minerals will all go to the left. You won't absorb your minerals because of that medication. A lot of your acid reflux issues is hypochlorhydria, lack of good stomach acid. You need stomach acid to help break down your foods and absorb them. So if you're not breaking down your foods, carbohydrates ferment, proteins putrefy, all those foods go south, give you gas, bloating, indigestion, constipation issues. These are all your other symptoms of low stomach acid issues. A lot of people are dealing with dead stomachs and these guys that are gas bags, this is simple stuff we fix all day long. You just need more acid in your stomach to help you digest your foods. Everyone's told you the other way, and everyone who goes to your medical doctor for stomach aches, everyone gets put on an antacid medication, which is the complete opposite of what most everyone needs. This is an x-ray of a patient. Gas issues, you know, he comes in for back issues. I'm like, all these black spots, this is all gas within your x-ray. He's not he or she is not digesting anything. This is all that undigested food just rotting, going south, creating all these issues on people. We'll see it on x-rays a lot of the times with patients, and this is a very key one to look at. James Hunter, this guy was a patient of mine, played for the Detroit Lions in the late 70s, came to me with acid reflux issues and gout problems. Acid reflux and gout. He retired to work for Anheuser Busch and was a spokesperson for him, slamming down beers all day long, pissing off his gout problem, irritating his reflux. I pushed his hiatal hernia down, fixed his gout. He came in three visits later. He goes, This is the best I've ever felt since entering the NFL draft. This is a very cool compliment. It's a very cool story. Bring that up. Because, you know, look at this hypochlorhydria, it's just, it's fixing the stomach. The stomach is everything when we talk about gut things. We want a paleo-based protein shake or something that's dairy, gluten, grain-free. This is what I do. I do the collagen powder, my greens. My greens, as I'll talk about later in the lecture, clears all this exogenous estrogens and plastics. This is your daily detox. It's the summertime, everyone's sweat more. Good salt is air conditioned to the body. I'm gonna add more of the salt to my shakes to get my electrolytes up with this kind of stuff. And I'm gonna put some chocolate in there cause I think the greens taste like crap, but I know how important they are, so I'm gonna get those greens down me. <laughs> the number two killer of men is statin medications. Statin medications. When you're addressing male hormones, you have to ask two questions. Is there enough cholesterol to produce your hormones? If the cholesterol is too low, why is it low? Is it because of statin medications? Is it a sick liver? Is it inflammation? Is it lack of essential fatty acids? Is it a possible vegan vegetarian diet that may have possibly done that? You've got to ask these questions and we look at why is this a killer of men. This answer is so simple. Test that cholesterol is a precursor to make Testosterone, here we go, back to the same chart. Cholesterol helps produce testosterone. I'm gonna beat this in your heads tonight 
because we are so sick of talking about this medication with patients, it's unbelievable. I got to remind patients all the time, <laughs> you are nothing but revenue for pharmaceutical companies on this stuff. You look at the top medications in 2015, statin medications are always in the top 10. You look at the top prescribed medications, 2015, statin medications are always somewhere within the top 10. It is a big business. And this is some rehash from my drug-induced nutritional deficiency lectures. It's amazing every time you look at this list, how much it changes even from year to year and medications that are going up and a list and that and just the amount of cancer medications that are just robbing people. It's unbelievable. The, the fastest growing cost of medications for patients to take right now. But, you know, Pfizer has you men covered today. Is it a coincidence that Pfizer's best-selling drug, Lipitor, to cure you know, high cholesterol causes erectile dysfunction for which you take a Pfizer Viagra? I mean, this is just things to think about, but you know, your brain's only 60% fat, so these guys on statin medications lower your cholesterol, lower your cholesterol with your brain, that brain function is gonna go down pretty quickly, and guys aren't gonna think about stuff like this. Tell me that was rehashed from that lecture. You could find that on YouTube. The science, the science that promotes statins is bought and paid for, unfortunately, and everyone thinks that these are miracle medications, and unfortunately, it's not. When I was in medical school, I thought that science was this beautiful, pristine, <laughs> you know, honest field full of integrity and truth. And as I've learned and as I read the data, it's highly influenced by the food industry. It's highly influenced by bias. It depends on the design of the study and who's looking at it, who's paying for it. It's fascinating. And Mary Nessel is writing a new book about how the nutrition science that we have is corrupted by the food industry, which basically obfuscates the truth. And they try to promote basically false science, like fake news, yeah. like soda doesn't cause obesity and dairy is great for your bones and all sorts of ideas that we have pretty uh, much taken on in the society are, are often corrupt by the food industry. So science yeah. is not this pure field of truth. I'll show you my numbers in, in a uh, few more slides. But, you know, it's they're going in a direction of whether your cholesterol is good or bad, that they're going to want you on a low-grade statin medication for preventative medicine. This gentleman had low testosterone issues, 44 years old, and wanted me to address his erectile dysfunction issue. I already did testosterone creams and all this other crap that they had him loaded on. And I go, I think something's wrong with your heart. And he goes, my blood pressure is fine, this and that, no shortness of breath. Why do you think something's wrong with my heart? I go, you got to get blood to your unit down there for it to work. Those arteries going down south are the smallest arteries, some of the smallest arteries in the body. If you plug that up first, you'll have erectile dysfunction issues. You'll plug that up first before you have issues with your heart. You know, that's pretty interesting. So I ran some clotting factors on him because his doctor's still stuck on it. it's just cholesterol issues and never really looked at other heart factors with him. He had three of the four clotting factors come back through the roof. His jaw was dropped. His, M, his doctor was actually completely stunned by this, too. You know, if I could get your doctor to run blood work, I'll make him think differently from things that he sees and I'm running and how I'm fixing patients in front of them. <clears throat> it was pretty interesting to kind of see, you know, that was the least of his problem. He has some bigger problems. If he wants a strong heart, he's getting older, and he's only 44 years old. The real silent killers. You're looking at heart things and blood pressure things. I want these ran with you. I don't want your basic cholesterol stuff because everyone checks out and everyone's stuck on putting everyone on statins. I want that homocysteine. I want that lipoprotein A. I want that fibrinogen and that C-reactive protein checked with patients because no one's checking this stuff and this is going missed. I've had personally had patients have strokes in front of their doctors before they would run this panel with them. And it's driving me nuts because they need to start waking up to more of this because it's more than just a cholesterol issue with patients. 
we learned nothing about nutrition claims medical students. This is March 2008, a leading GP estimated that up to 80% of his patients had conditions linked to lifestyle and diet, which include obesity, type 2 diabetes, and depression. Yes, nothing has changed. Your doctors aren't learning anything about nutrition. It's embarrassing that they're still stuck on this low fat thing and some of these recommendations I hear from the patients that their doctors tell them just have absolutely stunned me. That's why everyone has a Lipitor deficiency. This is why there's a Xanax deficiency. This is why there's other medication deficiency. They treat you like you got a medication deficiency today. If you want more on the heart stuff, let me go back to my paleo diet lecture, my paleo cardiologist lecture on YouTube. If you want to run those clotting factors at the office, we run them for about 150 lab corps all spread throughout the U.S. We run this with our Skype patients all the time. I got to beat in your heads the importance of cholesterol. Why is cholesterol important? Old people with low cholesterol died twice as often from heart attacks as did old people with high cholesterol. Yet what you hear in your news and what your doctor is going to tell you is complete opposite. And the ranges on these labs are going lower and lower to get you on more and more medications. Same thing's going on with blood pressure. Last year this time they started saying, well, you know, 130 over 90 should be the new hypertension. And over that, we should get more people on blood pressure medications. So this... You've seen this over the decades just with cholesterol. 250 total cholesterol is perfectly fine 40 years ago. High cholesterol protect, protects against infection. Low cholesterol predicted an increased risk of dying from gastrointestinal and respiratory diseases. I had an old study I quoted. It was like, I believe it was 120 or 130 total cholesterol and lower. There is higher rates of heart attacks and cancers. Um, that was a very popular one that cycled around. These three guys are so tired about talking about your cholesterol and statin medications and so much Dr. Brownsing in the middle that he wrote a book about it, The Statin Disaster. This is some of his stuff from his book. These are all the side effects from these stupid medications and one of the reasons I recommend you get off this stuff when I see this stuff on your list. Let's go back to your brain. Your brain's 60% fat, 60% cholesterol. Statins cause brain dysfunction. Memory impairment, transient, transient uh, cases of global amnesia, confusion, paranoia, disorientation, depression, dementia. This is why you're seeing so much dementia, memory issues, and Alzheimer's and these older folks that have been taking this stuff for years, decades. Lower your cholesterol, lower your brain function. This is simple, basic stuff, knowing your brain is 60% fat. Nerve issues, neuropathy, neuropathy and statins. And these are the things that were reported from 2004 to 2014 through the uh, FDA adverse events databases. There are neuropathy, pain in your extremities, balance disorders, coordination problems. <laughs> Why is this stuff gonna create problems with the nerves and neurons in your brain? Well, your neurons are composed of cholesterol. This myelin fatty sheath is all cholesterol. Lower your cholesterol, create these nerve problems, get this neuropathy issue going on. Your statin medications are turning you all diabetic. Once you're diabetic, now you got to babysit your nerves, you got to babysit your kidneys, you got to babysit your heart, your eyes, the medications, your insulin. Oh my gosh, this keeps going up year after year. Your insurance is, you know, it's more out of pocket cost being a diabetic. And heaven forbid, if you could prevent this stuff via diet versus being pushed on a statin and being pushed in this diabetic realm. This is what they're doing to patients. Cancer and statins. Animal studies have found cholesterol-lowering medications associated with cancers in the intestine, liver, and thyroid, as well as lymphoma. I want higher cholesterol.
I am not scared, and I don't play that game, but I've, I've got genetically crappy numbers. These are my genetically crappy numbers in front of you. My numbers are so much sugar and carbohydrate driven. If I look at sugars, my numbers go through the roof. We laugh at this at the office because Dr. Tennant eats like crap. His numbers are better than mine. I eat good and my numbers are crappier than his. If I hop off my diet, my numbers go to this very quickly. I know what's going to plug me up. Triglycerides could plug you up. LDL could plug you up only if it's the dense kind and none of your doctors are checking if it's the dense kind. You have to have an NMR panel or a VAT panel to have them do the particle measure size testing to see if you got the crappy dense kind like I do or the type B, which is the buoyant kind. And I'll get into a special case with that. When I follow my diet and I hop on my paleo stuff and ketogenic stuff, and by the way, if I follow the vegetarian-based diet, I can still eat sugars and carbohydrates and my numbers would stay the exact same. My numbers are very much sugar-driven. If I hop on my paleo ketogenic diet, my numbers come down to my normal. This is my normal. Not the range's normals, but these are my normal. My LDL was just a tad high. I've had it lower than that. I think doing some of the MCT oil may have driven that up a little bit. Dr. Mark Hyman talks about MCT oil driving up some of the LDL and some of the cholesterol in some patients, but it's typically the good part of the LDL, but your doctors will know if it's a good part because none of them run that VAP NMR panel. Clotting factors. That's Start with that. If you got heart attack, stroke, cardiac issues that run in your family, you want those ran first. Here's a classic NMR panel that's going to check particle size testing, you want to see where that small one's at. You want to see more of the A pattern. If it climbs here, it's going to go to that B pattern. That's, that LDL will plug you up. If you've ran those and you want more further diagnostic stuff with your heart, the cardio ion testing is my most overall thorough diagnostic heart testing for patients that I run. Genova Labs, cardio ion testing, there was too many um, cofactors that it runs for me to list it all on a slide. You could go uh, to Genova's lab website and see all the different factors that that runs if you're interested in that. Here's a 41-year-old male diagnosed with high cholesterol, 300, above 300. Of course, your doctor recommends a statin, plays hockey six days a week. And I said, you know, your cholesterol may not be a problem. You've got to run that NMR panel. He runs that NMR panel, and that LDL, small particle sizing, is more of that buoyant kind. As high as his cholesterol was, he will never plug up because of his LDL because it's not the dense kind. He could have that number high as long as he wants. That will never plug him up. I had a request for his doctor to run that, but that was an absolute cool key case for that. Sugars and carbohydrates. Sugars and carbohydrates will push people in that dense kind. And here's the key. If you got that buoyant kind that floats, this, the B LDL, that's going to be more the bad part of the LDL if you've got that. And sugars and High carbohydrate and sugar diets push you more towards that small LDL dense kind. That's all on that paleo lecture I talk about that. This was cool. This gentleman was supposed to be out in the crowd this evening. 66 year old male, shortness of breath stairs. Um, he was in just last month this time. Um, he got sick a few times over the winter. He hasn't been right since he's been sick. And he's had all this shortness of breath stuff. They don't know if he's got asthma, if there's something with his lungs. They've ran him through all this gamut with his heart stuff. Just through simple muscle testing, I found he had what I think was a heart virus, a virus attacking his heart. A heart virus will give people shortness of breath at rest. If you get a virus attacking your lungs, you'll get wheezing, asthmatic type symptoms. I treated him for a heart virus, just a matter of and this, and this is all his medications he's on. He was on let's, 10 medications, something like that. So I'm 
I didn't touch any of his medications. I just put him on all the supplements. Treated him for a heart virus. Cardio Plus, Cyruta Plus, Bio FCTS, CoQ10, and just treating his prostate for some things. Feels like he could fly. Energy is awesome. He got sick over the winter and something latched onto his heart and it was giving him breathing problems and none of the doctors could figure it out. I'm going to say one simple thing on memory issues with guys. Between your statin medications, between the aluminum in your antiperspirant, and between your fluoride in your toothpaste, your memory is all going to crap. It's that simple. I'll nail one of those three on most men that come in the office. My last lecture was the heavy metal lecture. Short-term memory is typically the issue with aluminum in patients. This was a 69-year-old male with memory problems. I ran his hair analysis. His aluminum was through the roof. I don't think it was from antiperspirant. He was being exposed to something, aluminum somewhere. His homocysteine was elevated. That will create memory problems. High homocysteine levels will create dementia-like symptoms and Alzheimer-like symptoms in individuals if you don't catch that. Why? Because that's a genetic factor that creates placking within the arteries. You plaque up your arteries in your brain, you'll have those dementia-like symptoms and memory issues. Kids will have the ADD, ADHD. Adults will have your adult ADD or your memory problems if you have high aluminum. I suggest you look at a hair analysis and rule that out. The number three killer of men is exogenous estrogens, xenoestrogens. Xeno means false estrogens. These are chemicals, these are plastics, these are things that get within the body and mimic estrogen in the body. These are all the different things that are spread around many homes that have this estrogen activity in your body. Dr. Jeff, it's the post holidays. I want to do a little holiday detox. What do I do for a few days? You're not going to do something for a few days. You want to do something daily because the food, the water, the air is filled with this crap and you can't get around this. It's feminizing everyone, especially the guys. The guys are taking the biggest hit. And that's why you watch that disappearing male documentary, your jaw will drop watching this stuff. It's baffling. You know, you break down these plastic numbers, what's safe, what's not safe. I don't want any plastic in you. I don't care if it's the safe one. Go to stainless steel. Go to something else. This stuff, you know, it's, heat will still leach plastic into this crap, and it's still going to be a problem with you. I had a lady in today. She's dealing with fibroid stuff and weight gain. I'm like, oh, that's estrogen-driven. It's estrogen-dominant problems, and this plastic stuff's going to further escalate th those problems. I kicked this piece of crap to the curb about four years ago. Nothing about putting hot water through a plastic K cup and all this plastic through this. You're just getting all BPA through this stuff. It's the convenient killer. Go back to an old fashioned coffee pot with this thing because everyone's getting BPA through this stuff. You want man boobs? You know, <laughs> learn to clear your estrogen. You want the estrogen clear. The guys who aren't clearing the estrogen and all this stuff, they're getting man boobs because of this crap. Learn to use the things that clear estrogen out of the body. I want your leafy green things, your cruciferous vegetables that have that sulfuric compound that's going to push this crap out of your body. If you're that <laughs> concerned about it too, Genova Labs, Genova Labs has a BPA profile. I haven't really ran it with anyone, but they have a profile if you feel that plastic is an absolute concern. And also, Great Plains Laboratory um, also has it as well. Beer and estrogen. Alcohol increases aromatase activity in people. What is aromatase? You look at the conversion factor, here's your aromatase. So if you increase this activity, your testosterone converts right down to estrogen. All alcohol, and especially beer, with all your hops and that kind of crap, pushing everyone more into <coughs> estrogen. This is why your hardcore beer people have beer bellies and boobs, because it increases aromatase and everyone converts right to estrogen. 
This is Diagnose Text Labs. This is a very good laboratory. I'm actually going to set up an account with them. Some of my hardcore cases that I'm struggling with as far as ED or whatever, some of the guys have been really working hard at their health, I'm setting up an account with them because it tells me all these intermediate factors and in, you know, your progesterone, DHT, uh, testosterone, estradiol, of which high, which is high, which is low. So I could tell which conversion process you're having a problem with. So I will actually be setting up an account with them because I'm very impressed with what I've seen from this lab. Now, 2013, testosterone treatments linked to heart attacks. Testosterone treatments may increase risk for heart attacks, strokes, and deaths in older men with low hormone levels and uh, other health problems, uh, big veteran affairs study suggests. This is interesting because women who do hormone replace, traditional hormone replacement therapy have been known to have heart attack, stroke, and cancer. Now, guys who are doing synthetic testosterone support have slowly been somewhat pushed into having some heart attack stroke issues as well. So the catch 22 is if you have low testosterone, you could also have heart issues just because of low testosterone components. This kind of goes back to that high aromatase and converting to estrogen problem. Life Extensions Magazine kind of had a follow up to this. You know, obviously talked about excess estrogen promotes abnormal clot formation and high levels may be associated with an increased risk of stroke. When men take testosterone, there's a significant propensity for it to be converted into estradiol by aromatase. So these guys are going to their doctor, they got low testosterone, low T, taking synthetic testosterone, and they're converting down into estrogen because of the high aromatase and they're having heart attacks and strokes, not because of the testosterone, because of the aromatase issue and converting it into estrogen. <coughs> what else increases aromatase activity? Insulin problems, obesity, alcohol. These, the mushrooms, grapeseed extract, chrysin are things that decrease, those are aromatase inhibitors, they classify them as. Increased estrogen equals increased aromatase due to metabolic syndrome. So aromatase up, you convert in the testosterone into estrogen and then just insulin surges and you go in this cycle and it drives more estrogen issues in guys. Insulin resistance. Can't lose weight. Work out a million times and I still keep the same shape. This is insulin resistant issues. Glucose, sugar balance, and berberine. Berberine's been a phenomenal herb. It's like natural metformin. That is one of the, this, I do this every single day. My crappy blood numbers with my cholesterol are insulin resistance. I've got my triglycerides based on my last um, blood work down to 124. My A1C was down from 5.5 down to 5.0 just from this protocol, my paleo base dieting, it has been phenomenal what that has done. The number four killer of men is passive transfer. This is probably the most sneaky thing I will talk about and that you will ever hear. What is passive transfer? If you are sleeping with a spouse who's doing hormone replacement therapy, whether it's oral or topical hormone replacement therapy, that stuff will bioaccumulate in her body and through skin, saliva, and contact at night, guys are getting estrogen at night. I've had women getting high testosterone, not knowing why they've got high testosterone because their husband's doing androgel, sleeping with them, and they're getting this crap at night and not knowing this and growing beards and crap. This was brought up to me from a doctor from the West Coast, Dr. Rhonda Nelson, that has talked about this passive transfer thing. I've learned a lot from her with these um, male hormones, and she works very heavily with balancing the gut, balancing the adrenals, and balancing the blood sugar to help balance off a lot of male hormone issues with guys. I had a case about four years, four or five years ago, 
we couldn't find out why his estrogen was so high on his blood work. He was an executive guy, drank a lot of you know water bottle stuff with lunch hour type thing and throughout work, diagnosed, or diagnosed with uh, prostate cancer. That was back in day Wednesday and um, went to get a prostate removed because doctors told him a short time to live. Prostate did not get removed because his blood pressure was really high. He's still living and doing just fine. Most guys will outlive a prostate cancer. Most of them are slow growing prostates cancers. <clears throat> but the key thing talking about this was we're trying to figure out why his estrogen stuff was so high. His wife was doing hormone replacement therapy and he was getting this crap at night through his wife. I would have never known that if I didn't hear Dr. Nelson talk about this. I'm not going to talk too much about the PSA stuff because it gets overplayed. It gets way overplayed with most patients. The problem with is not the PSA test itself. The problem is that most urologists and oncologists are not properly interpreting PSA results nor are they efficiently implementing further diagnostic and treatment protocols. They're jumping and pushing guys to biopsies too quickly. Watch, wait, do the prostate exam, digital prostate exam. They're pushing people too quick in the biopsy stuff. And these this PSA test is like the new mammograms. There's a lot of false positive testing with this stuff and turning into guys having a lot of unnecessary procedures because of it. Supporting prostate health. Prostate Power Food Research, Argonex. Natural prostate growth as you get older and having a hard time urinating, this is gonna be the protocol. Male hair loss. Genetics, high cortisol, high DHT. Probably the top three things that's going to create this issue. You go back to this chart, too many of the guys are going to convert to testosterone, the DHT. It's a conversion problem right here with a lot of guys. And you'll see that if it's on that test. Elevated DHT causes hair follicles to shrink, unfortunately. <clears throat> Let's talk about some testosterone. Testosterone is the major androgen responsible for sexual differentiation, differentiations in secondary male uh, sex characteristics. It comes in both free and the bound form. The key thing when looking at testosterone is the free testosterone is the active form. Usually measuring both is key, but looking at the free testosterone has greater diagnostic efficacy uh, than total testosterone. Guys who are taking too much synthetic testosterone, it could actually downregulate so much that it causes hormone deficiency in people. A lot of this is going to create what, you know, you get women that have male menopause symptoms. This is going to be a male menopause, what we classify as andropause type symptoms as far as erectile dysfunction, lack of body hair, beard, uh, gynomastia, uh, mood issues of low testosterone type issues. You look at the other causes of decreased testosterone right there, and you have causes of increase on the other side. Genova has a nice test, and this is my test. I like to see things via saliva. I think saliva is a lot more accurate testing when you're looking at these factors. This is my testosterone, this is just last year, all right there, all throughout the day. Melatonin, this is interesting. There's a lot of things going on with people having sleep issues and melatonin problems. My melatonin's, you know, this is going to sleep at night. My melatonin should be up in that range. It's not. There's so many people with the Wi-Fi stuff, the cell phone towers, that are just getting hit and bombarded by all this EMF. All this EMF stuff is suppressing people's melatonin and they're sleeping like crap at night because of low melatonin levels. EMF in the smart meter stuff, this is the whole new animal of today and it's affecting people's sleep. 
This was my Corazol. Mine was elevated first thing in the morning. I actually screwed up. I didn't. I was supposed to wait for that time window, and I took it a lot earlier, and I didn't wait long enough. So that was an error on that one. But everything else seemed to be in range, and DH, uh, DHEA was in range as well. So male hormones plus that is 175 bucks at Genova Labs if you're wanting to look further in the hormone stuff. You know, testing hormones, you can look at urine, you, you can look at blood, you can look at saliva. These are just different factors of what's more beneficial and why you're going to run different ones for different reasons. Urine can look good and look, or look great for um, the metabolites, but it could be affected by your liver and kidney function. Serum, which is the blood component, is protein bound unless it's requested for the free form and it's gonna measure the total production, good for identifying hormone producing uh, cancers. Um, the saliva, which is, which I think is the gold standard, it's the free form only, measures how much is readily available for cells to use, best indicates for glandular production, helpful for testing levels relative to time. You know, and you know, there's key steps to check, you know, going back to, hormones on females and males, is there enough cholesterol? Is the pregnigolone still happening where you're getting stressed out, cortisol goes up, hormones and testosterone go down because of that stress factor? Is the pituitary talking to the gonads? Are the gonads responding? Are you being affected by exogenous estrogens? Is there gut issues? Is there adrenal stuff, sugar handling issues? This is all the stuff that the functional medicine puts together and helps the guys get back on track versus just saying your testosterone is low, let's just shove you on some synthetic testosterone. I want to see why you're not producing testosterone. I'm going to rule those factors out. When to use blood. Uh, when you're looking for a mass tumor or cancer, you want total amount level being produced. I got a Skype guy right now in Florida. He had some cancer in the past. And this testosterone's a bit elevated more than I'd like. That seems to be a concern to me. It can be an intriguing case to see how that plays out. He's a veterinarian. And I told him last time we were Skype, I'm like, you know, there's some days I wish I was a veterinarian and I just worked on animals. You know, those, those problematic patients, that, you know, I can't put down like you could just put down a dog <laughs> or a cat for that matter. So you go to saliva testing, this is the gold standard, just kind of rehash on that. So where do you start? And you're a guy, where are you going to start with this kind of stuff? Start on a daily protocol. Nourish yourself right. You've got to be on a good quality protocol. Run some basic blood work. Look at the free total testosterone. You could kind of throw the PSA in if you want. If you have heart, cardiac issues that run in the family, blood pressure issues, run the clotting factors. Come in and get muscle tests. It's kind of cool. Maybe see so what pops up on muscle testing, that kind of stuff. If I need to get in more advanced based testing, I'm going to run the male hormone kit with patients. Maybe look in the NMR panel if you've got the high cholesterol issue going on. The cardio ion testing through Genova is an option. I customize plans to the patient. I don't do the cookie cutter, cu cookie cutter stuff that most of your doctors are going to do with you. The supplements we use in office, doctor's research, standard process, biotics research for patients and Skype patients, the shipping or is, uh, over 175 are free. If you're active during the summer as I am, good foot support. Your feet are your foundation. I like using my A-lines. My previous lectures on YouTube keep adding up. I don't know what I'm going to do after my fall lecture. I'm debating if I'm going to do some mini lectures and take a break from my recorded lectures or take a year off of recorded lectures and just gather new information. It's, I'm kind of up in the air what I'm going to do for the, some of my future lectures right now. Well, I know I'm going to have a good, strong gut lecture in the fall. Questions, comments, concerns, my email's there. Yeah.